Welcome to Beholder's Eye, a 5th edition actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Thank you for joining us. My name is Alex, and I'll be your host and dungeon master. Joining me, as always, is... Magnar Skullgrim, Goliath Sorcerer. Hobonite, Fire Gensai, Dragon Sorcerer. Margrain Silverbeard, Dwarf Paladin. All right, Sam, you want to recap last episode? Sure, I'll recap last episode. That sounds great. Uh, so last episode, we started off in yet another fight. Uh, we were against some of those red demon things. Uh, still don't know what those are entirely other than transformed people. Uh, we surprisingly got out of it. Um, I thought we were going to die. Uh, Hibonite got dropped. Uh, Magnar got put to sleep. Uh, I got to help save Blevin a little bit. That was cool. Um <laughs> we once we killed them, oh, we searched the bodies, and Margraine checked the chest of the shaman again, and we found another book, which is kind of creepy. Uh, and then let's see, we decided we needed to sleep, so we 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 kind of we took a rest and we talked to Blevin a little bit. Margraine likes Blevin even more than he did before, <laughs> and. Then we talked as a group about what we're going to do about this whole book thing, because Mar Magnar just got a message from Brommel asking if we have it yet. So we will see. And uh, we left off the night with a uh, minotaur walking out of the woods into our camp. Friendly minotaur. He talked back to you. That doesn't mean he's friendly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you said hi. He said hi back. Well, he's got manners, at least. <laughs> okay. All right, so you see this very large minotaur standing over you, carrying a great axe, and he responds to you, Magnar, and says, Hello. Might I join you? I'm, uh, I'm a little weary myself. Of course, of course. Pull up a log. <laughs> so uh, he comes over, and, you know, he's, he's uh, extremely tall. He's actually taller than you are, Magnar. And um, he comes up, and he sits down next to you, and says, Oh, this weather, huh? It makes it hell on my old bones. Indeed. Uh, where are you traveling to, friend? Uh, I'm heading out to uh, Paragon, there up north. And uh, I'm, I'm following someone. There's, uh, you guys haven't happened to see a, a young lady running around here, have you? Uh, got some red hair. She's uh, you know, dressed kind of funny, like a westerner. Was that the witch lady? No. Alex? No. no. Okay. She was a blonde. Uh, no, we have... I don't think we've seen anyone like that here. Might be too cold for a little lass out here by herself. Oh, well, yeah. That seems kind of sexist, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I think she'd be able to take care of herself. Uh, she, uh, uh... She's wanted for, for murdering a few people, and so I was hired to come follow her, and... Last I heard, she's heading out to Paragon, so gotta come and take her back. You know how it is, um, but uh, it's good to sit for a little bit, I tell ya. I tell ya. Roads are dangerous out here now, right? Oh, very dangerous. Have you had much trouble yourself? Oh, I've had to kill so many people. It's it's ridiculous at this time. Um, yeah, I mean, bandits are everywhere. And I don't know. These people are, are coming out of the woods with their, their black eyes and their red skin. I've, I've never seen them before. And, I'm just attacking everybody, so I gotta kill some of them as well. And then there are these soldiers that are, are coming up from, you know, down south, and I gotta kill them too, because they're attacking me, I'm guessing, for money. I don't know. It's just so many dead people. How about some green robed people? Have you seen any of them? Uh, no, no, can't say I have. Well, you're, you're free to share our fire here. Oh, well, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're just a, about a day away. And, and, and if this weather would give up um, a little bit, it should be easy traveling. But I wouldn't mind traveling with uh, a few of you, if you don't mind. It's just a little bit safer. Are, are we headed that way? Yeah, that's the town by the Paragon's the town? The pass, oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, nice I'll, I'll look to Margraine and Hibonite, because I don't know about that. I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit slack-jawed. Uh, I'm pretty Yes. Yeah, yes, you, you can travel with us. The more the merrier, yes? Oh, well, thank you very much. That's very kind. That's very kind of you. And um, if we get there and 
And if any of you guys have any news on this this little lady, uh, if you just let me know where she's at, I'll be happy to give you 25 gold apiece. 25 gold apiece, I see. Yeah. Wow. Gold's hard to come by these days. Ah, oh, it is, and it is, and it isn't. You know, it is, and it isn't. Uh, you, you take the line of work I'm in, and it seems to just come to you. I mean, you might lose your life, but uh, your pockets will be full. It, yes, I, 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 can, I can see how that would be nice. I mostly just risk my life for free, so. Ah, oh, well, that's stupid. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh, it kind of is, but yeah, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yep, that's me done. So, what, what, what's your name, friend? Uh, my name is, is uh, Turin Blackhorn. And what's your name? Turin Blackhorn. Just a second. I'm writing. Yep. Yeah, we it, need to know. It's because this horn up here is, is black and, and this horn over here is white. But, you know, the black one stands out. It sounds cooler if I was Turin Whitehorn. It, it, it doesn't sound like a good ba- bounty hunter name, right? No, Less no. menacing, definitely. Yeah, yeah, Blackhorn. Oh, that's scary. That'll, that'll chop your head off, right? Yeah, I know. I know a man who goes by the name of Bone Tooth. That's that's that was a pretty good name. That is a good name. Yes. Mm. I don't have a big bone tooth though. Yeah. A big black horn. So black horn. Yes. You you do look rather menacing. I, well, I, thank I, you. I, I I I do a lot of push-ups and I run and then I chop people's heads off and it makes me very strong. Well, I I would assume it would. Um, I would. I would ask you to please refrain from chopping my head off, but... Well, I mean, if, if somebody comes to me and they say, hey, that little fellow over there, he needs to have his head chopped off, and here's 400 gold pieces, I will chop your head off then. I see. But nobody's done that, so you're safe. I, 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 I see. Well, I'll, And then I'll, he, like, I'll... laughs really hard. <laughs> uh, can I incite his laugh? Sure. Because I don't know if it's, like, uh, laughing hard as... Oh, how about a four? <laughs> I mean, it seems like he's laughing pretty hard at himself. It, whatever he... Magnar laughs. Oh, uh, this guy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Your, your ethics seem flawless. I agree. It's pretty black and white. You pay me to kill somebody, I'll do that. Somebody pays me to kill you after I kill that person for you, I'll do that too. Are there people who, no matter how much someone offered you, you wouldn't kill? Mm, nope. What about family? They're all dead. Love of your life? Never had one. If you I... had a child... Well, I'd have to have a love of my life first, wouldn't I? Well, not necessarily a love of your life, just a one-night affair. <laughs> just an accident. Uh, well, it hasn't happened, so I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Uh, qu- what about question, yourself? Question what? for future reference. Mm. Um, <laughs> what, if if somebody uh, offered you money to, uh, say, kill me, uh, could mm-hmm. I give you more when you show up to not? I mean, you could, but I'd have to, you know, I, I, I would complete my contract, so I'd kill you. And then I'd take the money from you oh. after you're dead and then go kill the other person. Because, you know, I mean, I, I, I do, as the man said, I have ethics. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. That, that, that seems like a very lucrative agreement for you. Um, it's worked out great. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting amount to travel a little while. How, how much do you normally get paid to kill someone? What's like a base rate? Well, you know, when I started off, it was just like 10 gold, right? You know, because you got to work your way up. you got to climb the ladder like everyone does in every business. But uh, right now, I mean, if you're not going to pay me at least 400 gold, it's not really worth my time, especially if I'm going to go traipsing all across the country. And, and uh, you know, sometimes they want me to go through the pass and cr- uh, across again, and that's dangerous. Um, but, you know, for something like this, just coming from the west to the east, it's, uh, you know, 400 gold. It's a good journey. It's uh, you know, not too bad. Does, I, does, I didn't think so. It's been worse than I thought, but, uh, you know. Does the cost go up with the station of the person you are asked to kill? It really just goes up on difficulty, you know. If, if I think it's going to be difficult, then... But, yeah, I mean, if it's high profile, then obviously it's going to be... If somebody was like, hey, go chop off the head of the queen, that would be tough. Or go kill the Grand Abbot, you know, I, mean, I might not even do that because I, I would probably die in both cases. But, you know, if it was like a duke, then, yeah, yeah, I'd probably charge more, but... It's not really so much the station as much as it has to do with how many guards they have. And how subtle can you be, or are you not really a subtle person? I mean, you know, nobody's ever like, oh, look out for the black horn, he's going to poison you, you know? Oh, uh, well, makes sense. Oh. Make, a, make a note of that. So how? Murder to, re- murder to hire 400. And you should ask him for his card, Ryan. Oh, do you have business <laughs> cards? What are some of them? I do, piece but, of paper? but he, he pulls it out and they turn into like a pile of pulp. In the, in the wetness. <laughs> Maybe when you get a new batch. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So how long have you been on the trail of this lady? Oh, it's been a while now. Um, really months. Almost, a, almost a, has it been a year? A year at this point. Yeah, it's been a while. Wow, she, she must be very wily to elude you for a year. Yeah, but luckily she just keeps killing people so I can follow her. Oh. Do you, do you take on more contracts at the same time? So is it like you're hunting her, but you do a side job of murder as well? Or? I mean, if there's an incidental, then yeah, you know. But you know, it'd have to be quick, you know. So it seems like you don't really... The value of your time goes down quite a lot, then, if someone can keep away from you. Oh, uh, I hadn't really thought of that. That's true. You should do it by month, month by month, sort of base. Build up an invoice. Mm. Expenses or that sort. Mm. <laughs> that is a very good idea. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that. Hire an accountant. Mm, I don't know about that, but so, but the more time I spend, it is like I make less money, right? Yeah, you, you got to feed yourself, travel, all that sort of stuff. I had Clean never your thought weapons. of that before. I had never thought of that before. Wow, you are a smart <laughs> man. <laughs> it's, it's no problem. Uh, so, um, do you guys have any other questions or anything else you want to do? No, no more know? questions how, for him. How I think is I'm good. Blevin reacting to this guy? He just He's making a few notes in his book, you notice? But, um, oh, okay. Other than that, he's just kind of sitting there, nodding his head, smiling. Okay. All right. Okay. So, sh- we should probably head out for huh? the rest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you guys make your way to the town of Paragon. Okay. Um. Actually, before we get there, Alex, okay. I want to talk to Blevin real quick. All right. Um. All right. Oh, uh, Blevin, I was wondering if you had come across a certain person in your book with who ha- hair. Uh. Well, do you write names down? Sometimes. Her name is Vodhava. She has she has hair like the rays of sunset, and eyes green like the shores of emerald. And skin as pale as a stormy sky. Hmm. She is a worker of the arcane. Would she would she be interesting enough for your book, perhaps? You know, it sounds like she would be interesting enough for you to fall in love with her, but maybe not quite the sort of interesting I look for in my book. Hmm. Uh, can I insight? Yeah. Six. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you believe me. All right, I like this guy more now. I know. Hmm. Yeah. Well, if you if you do come across her, would you would you speak with me about her? Absolutely, absolutely, not a problem. Thank you uh, very much. Of course. So you guys make your way um, to the town of Paragon, and it, it, it's a very small town. Um, you know, even as you approach it, you see that it is quite tiny. Um, it, the mountains are huge right behind them um it's extremely cold the wind just rips through the town itself it's the kind of wind that it it hits your clothes rips through it rips through your skin you just feel it down to the bone um and really um uh, even you hibonite with your your little heat in your hands Mm -hmm. it it doesn't protect you from the kind of weather this is it's definitely a very rough rough sort of wind um as you guys approach town then um, Turin says, Well, this is um, where I guess I'll leave you for now. i got to do a little scouting around, but thank you very much for, for letting me travel with you. I'm, I'm sure I'll see you around. Um, but, uh, you know, let me know. Once again, if you see that girl at all, I'll, I'll be happy to pay. Yeah, don't forget. Good luck bus- to you, friend. Don't forget business expenses. Oh, right. Business expenses. The more time it takes, the less money I make. Exactly. And he kind of points his finger at you and winks, and then... Uh, doesn't ever quite enter the town, kind of goes off to the side and in, into the dusky night. So you guys get to the town, and like I said, there, there's it's a small town. There's not a lot there. You see, you see um, a couple of businesses. There's um, cot supplies, C O T T S supplies. <laughs> that looks like it's a um, you know it's some kind of goods um, store. There is the Ambrosia Nap Inn. Mm-hmm. Okay. You see what is undoubtedly a undoubtedly a uh, blacksmith shop. It's called the Frozen Dagger. Ooh. Okay, blacksmith shop. And there's a sheriff's office. And there is toward the northern part of town. Um, you can see the Blue Root. And off in the very far distance, because the snow is not coming down so hard right now. 
you can see what look like it's, it's very small to your eyes but it looks like a very large gate that is as you figure out or as, as you're guessing will be the gate to Cretfix Pass okay very cool as we're going into the town it's a walk rain so how do we... uh, I wasn't expecting to go this far <laughs> um, <laughs> okay I, I, you, you learn ever, anything from Blevin last night? Uh, he keeps notes. He made notes for me, not you, Kai. It's not, his, it's not a religious book. He gave me his personal religious book, so. Oh. But um, he, I don't think he quite believed that we have the way through. I mean, I can make myself look like someone important. Back out a bit. I, I have, I have no interest in visiting the Empire. No. Shame. It might be interesting. It, it very well might be. But I, I, I do have a, I do have an idea. Okay. And, and yeah, I'll, I'll leave him, and I'll um. I'll, I'll, I'll walk, uh, up to Blevin. Um, so, so, Blevin, um, I need to figure out our, our arrangements here. Uh, would you, would you like a drink or something with us before you continue on? Yes, uh, yeah, that, that'd be great. Um, I was planning on spending the night here. I don't really want to travel through the pass, starting in the night at least. Um, oh, fantastic. Um, you, you've been through here quite a few times. Uh, where, where would you, where would you recommend? I mean, really, there's only one place to go for drink and food, and that's the Ambrosia Nap. Okay. Well, lead the way. All right. We lead you inside. It's a very large building. It's probably the largest bu- building in town. You see, as you enter, a number of soldiers in there. Uh, some of them are dressed in the uh, colors and with the emblem of Duke Delacro, and they're, they're pretty loud, boisterous, uh, all fairly young. You see one half-elf in particular, leading them in some songs. Uh, you see a number of other townspeople in there. There's uh, a human who's uh, drinking quite heavily, um, sitting at the bar. There's also a half-orc who's sitting there chatting with the human. And you see a man who is uh, also a human, very tall, very barrel-chested, um, looks kind of tired, though, a little ragged. And he has the... Uh, uh, well, he comes up to you guys and says, Well, uh, welcome, visitors. My name is Gavin Hobb. I'm the, I'm the sheriff here. Um, what, uh, did you guys come through the pass at this point? Uh, no, no, we, we, we came from, uh, from, uh, the Duke's castle, actually. Duke's castle, all right. Um, which Duke? Uh, Delacro. All right, well, you soldiers, or no, what no, I, here? I, I, as you can see, my friend and I, and I'll kind of point to Blevin. Um, uh, we are, we are uh, men of uh, Theos. Uh, he has business in the Empire, though, and we were looking for somewhere to uh, have some food and stay for the night before he sets off. All right. Well, and, and what is your? He's going through the past. What is your business here? And there ain't much business when it comes to Paragon, except for the past. So yes. why are you here? Yes, uh, I, I was I was planning on uh, I was supposed to make arrangements here in town to uh, for for our passage through. Hmm. Uh, give me a deception check. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Is uh, it? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, I'm not good at deception, <laughs> but we'll give it a shot. Fourteen. That's hey, not horrible. Not a six. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Well, you know, we'll just ask that you don't make any trouble. Um, uh, shouldn't be any worse than any of these goddamn soldiers who are in here getting drunk, fighting amongst themselves. So sick and tired of seeing them. But uh, without them. Kind of- what kind of soldiers are they? Um, you see mainly the soldiers of Delacro in here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so they're probably like guards for the pass or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you'd assume. So, right. Um, all right, well, um, as far right. as what you guys are, are doing, just stay out of trouble. And, uh, right. Yeah. Sure. Um, this would be my first time going through the past. What sort of uh, dangers are there in the past? Well, the wind will probably kill you. The snow, the wind and the snow. Um, there are creatures that are out there, giant wolves, bears, um, and then they say, and, well, I've seen them, you will see some of the, the soldiers who were killed at the Battle of Crit Mix Pass, they're, they're up walking around, apparently more now than ever, but, uh, you know, uh, obviously, you know, if you're going up there, you're gonna want to take one of the, the one of the, the clerics will go with you. For one of the clerics, uh, Castellana, they'll take one of the Castilian gloves, and, and you'll be okay. He usually keeps most of the most of the, the zombies and the skeletons away. Oh, so no bandits or weird red-skinned creatures, sort of thing. Not that I know of, no. 
no, I, I, nothing red. I mean, if it were red, it'd be easier to see in all that snow up there. You know, we'd see them coming True. instead of all these uh, pale, frozen, blue-skinned zombies coming at you. That's that's tough to see. Uh, yeah, it's good to it's just re- run into weird creatures on our travels. So I just want to make sure. Well, um, yeah, I mean, you're going to continue to do so if you go through the pass. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Yep, yeah, not a problem. Uh, um, you, you haven't happened to see um, a red-haired woman around at all, uh, Elvin? And he kind of narrows his eyes. Why would you want to know that? Uh, well, I was just talking to somebody, and he said to keep my eyes out for me. Hmm. I thought you as the sheriff would be the best person to ask, right? And you say you're a, you're a priest? I am, I am. Um, I'm a priest of St. Eligius. I'm one of, I'm one of his paladins. All right, he's looking you up and down. Well, I don't quite feel comfortable letting you know about everybody who comes to this town. I, I, I um, would understand that. I just, I thought it wouldn't it wouldn't harm asking. Maybe we'll run into her. Mm-hmm. Yes. Maybe you will. Are you, I think it's close. Are you bounty? <laughs> I'm not, no. Uh, as I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a paladin of uh, St. Eligius. So, you know, we're, we're on a completely, actually, separate thing. Uh, we are looking for a woman, though, but not her. But not not for any sort of bounty. Just a, just a person we might not travel as mentioned, but we thought we don't. Right, right. He winks at you. All right, I get you. I get you. By the way, yeah, stick around. I might, I might have something for you. Uh, oh, fantastic. Is it a present? Yeah. Is it a gift? Is it a book? <laughs> I like books. <laughs> no, none of those. Oh, that's a shame. Um, Cake? Yeah, but uh, tell you what, if... You were looking for a woman with red hair, an elf. She might, you know, I'm not saying I've seen her, but if she were, she'd probably be sitting like right over there by the fire up in the <laughs> corner. Seems oh. very specific for not seeing someone. I'm just saying that hypothetically redhead people sit there. <laughs> what red skin? Hey, hey, uh, do you think there's an empty chair for you? He said, <laughs> said redhead people sit there, yes. Is there an empty chair? <laughs> <laughs> you look over to the corner, and um, there is a, a, a woman sitting there. You can't tell if she has red hair or not because her cloak is up, her cowl is up on her cloak. Um, and is so, ch- is there a chair next to the person? Uh, she's sitting at a, a small table in the corner, obviously trying to be hidden by the the uh, shadows of the fire. There is one chair next to it. Uh, I sh- I stroll over. Okay, so Zalara, you're sitting there in the chair, and you've noticed this. Strange group of people, a, a Goliath, a red-skinned man of the legs you've never seen before, an extremely well-armored, at, at first what you thought was a little boy, but uh, he's very clear he's a halfling. Oh, he's cute. And, and, there, uh, and then a um, uh, man dressed in, uh, you would know the, the holy cloth of, and you know, the holy getup of uh, St. Morin. So you see a man dressed in black. He, he looks... Uh, rather handsome, rather charming, but he is a human. Um, he's with them, but it's clear that he goes to the bar very quickly and gets some food. The sheriff, Gavin, is speaking with them and uh, kind of looks over at you and then looks over at you a couple more times directly and points at one point, and then the red-skinned man comes up to you. So how do, how do you react? Uh, hi. Apparently this is the designated red redhead corner. Is that correct? I didn't realize it was designated, but you're welcome oh. to have a seat. I will sit down then. Hip and I. I put my hand up to shake. I return. I'm Solara. Solara. Nice name. Thank you. Been in the town long? Uh, I've been around. Uh, have you heard of someone called Torin Blackhorn? Oh, he's been following me. Did he? Oh god, don't tell me he's in town. Oh, we saw him somewhere nearby. I gave him some really sound business advice. Apparently he doesn't do travel expenses. You... what? <laughs> well, he travels a lot. Apparently he's been searching for a redhead for the last year. And he, he hasn't been claiming expenses at all. He's just been earning the same amount. Really well, bad that, business practice. That That's how bounties work, right? Yeah, but if if he travels for a long time, it's not really worth his money. He's how are you going to get... the same amount of money. That's a fascinating concept. Lots, lots of smaller jobs nearby with only more money than one big job that takes him across the country. Fair, but I don't think I'll be going into bounty hunting anytime soon. I'm oh, kind really, of basic economy. hiding. Who are you hiding from? Um, you just told me he's here. 
So. Ah, so you're the person he's looking for. Thank you for confirming. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> <laughs> don't, I, I don't mean to. I don't mean to tell him you haven't wronged me, so I'm not going to tell him. And to be honest, he seems a bit weird. I mean, he, he's he, a he, minotaur. I mean, but he, 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 that's just not all minotaurs are bad people. People I've, call me a demon, and I'm a good person. Well, you are different. What are you? Oh, I'm a Jensen. A what? Jensen. I've never heard of that. Where did you come from? That's a long story that I've been telling a lot of people recently. Oh. So I'm going to kind of <laughs> stop telling people. Because a lot of people ask it. It's getting a bit repetitive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I, I came from far far away. Actually, it's not actually that one. It's fairly far away from here. I should say I, I so. Didn't tum, I didn't come from here. That would do. Obviously. <laughs> Infinite master of words. <laughs> <laughs> He is a conversationist. Gets people talking. Um, are, are you going through the pass? I wasn't planning on it. I'm just yeah. okay. kind of hanging around. Um, Do you mind if I... my friends join me? Because they're just standing over there like some <laughs> idiots by the door. <laughs> um, All right. Uh, real quick, while, since you say that, we'll cut over to them. And uh, Gavin is, is talking to you two. Perfect. Since, All right. So... Right, so what we got going on here now? It's a small town, you know. We let things happen that that need to happen sometimes, you know. But uh, one thing that is really just chapping my ass at this point in time is we've had some some well, I, I'm not gonna say like robberies, but more like burglaries, I guess you could say, of many of the caravans that come through. You know, I mean, they're specialized caravans that are protected by both the Empire, protected by Thalmer. And uh, we just had some people come through, and you know, turns out they lose some of their their pottery, their the stuff, their their wares, the things they're looking to sell here in Thelmer. And it's always after they stop at the Blue Root. So I'm sure I haven't been able to prove it, but I am sure that Anastasia over there, she is leading them. You know, it's not just prostitutes over there. Is what I'm saying. You know, they're thieves too. I see. Um, but, you know, if you guys could get in there, I don't really have any legal way of getting in there without starting a whole mess of trouble. And a town this small, you know, it's the kind of trouble you don't want. So when I see visitors like you who are not bounty hunters, any winks, um, come into town, <laughs> I think, well, maybe there is some some help that I could have. And I'm willing, willing to pay you. I got three health potions and 150 gold pieces. If you get in there and can find that that pottery, well, then I could go in there and I'll, I'll make sure to make it right for you. Wow, that's that's very interesting. Um, and wh- wh- why are they stealing the pottery? You don't know? Just oh, uh, they're thieves. They're dirty thieves. That's why. They're dirty thieves. Okay. Uh, but it's pottery. Yeah. You, well, you, people you spend a lot of time on more. It. Well, yeah, and if we were, we were pottery made here in Paragon, then you've got a point there, big fella, but it wasn't, now was it? It was made all the way across Kretvik's Pass, and that is one some bitch to get across, right? I mean, just to walk across is a lot, but actually get the authority from both the church and both the Empire and Thelmer to say, okay, you can trade goods, it's worth a lot of money. And a lot of people are making money in that way, and those people are getting upset, and they get upset at little old me. And if they get upset at little old me, then I might disappear, and that's not great. Did that make sense, or was that a little too much for your your, your big old head? No, I got it, but it's it's pottery. Well, it's it's you... just import <laughs> export business, Magnar. It it doesn't make much sense. I'd rather just buy a cheaper one that was locally made. But people really like to import and get things. Um, oh right, okay. stuff is better if it's from over there. Yes. That's what all the rich people think. Yeah, gra- grass is always greener on the other side of the pass. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, well, I think we actually had business in 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 that uh, in that establishment, didn't we, Magnar? We can we can look around if we're in there. If we see it, yes, we will let you know. Right, you had business. I get you. I get you. It winks a couple times. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, you, you, you said you said they were prostitutes. It wouldn't happen to be a brothel, would it? Yeah, Blue Roots brothel. Oh, huh. Why would he send us to a brothel, Magnar? 
Probably but. the, you know, I mean, do you guys not know what a brothel is for? No, no, I'm, I'm quite aware. I'm just confused as to why we're, <laughs> we're going to a brothel. <laughs> aren't, aren't we in the Blue Roots? No, I no, no this is the, this is the end. Ambrosia Nap Inn. Uh, yeah. Well, um, we, we'll see what we can do about it. And then you hear, um, at that moment, um, Hibonite call you over. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, I'll 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 leave you be. I I really appreciate all the information you've given us. It was been very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Not a problem. I appreciate all the things that uh, you are doing for me in the future. I appreciate that as well. Yes. Yes. I'm I'm always I'm always a fan of helping out out the the sheriff. Uh, one of my good friends is a sheriff, and I'll just walk off at that point. And over your shoulder, you hear him yell, "Theos bless you." Yes. Theos be with you too. You know? And Alex, I'll, I'll sit so I can still keep an eye on Blevin as he's eating or drinking, whatever he's doing. Okay, yeah, he's at, at the bar and uh, obviously eating and, and drinking. Um, I'll, 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 I'll walk up to, to Hibonite. Yes, Hibonite? Oh, so you remember the Minotaur we met? Yes. This is the lady he's looking for. She seems pretty cool, though. Doesn't seem I... like the murderer that he made her sound, her sound out like. So far, I, you I... haven't made me upset. So, well, so you did kill all those people? Well, uh, I really would rather not get into it in public. Oh, I, I, I can understand that. I'm just trying to trying to figure out, you know, uh, what you're you're up about. So, I'm I was from a monastery, okay. and uh, I'm sorry. It's still so hard. Um. Well. It's 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 okay. You you don't have to get into it. Um, I was I was just trying to figure out. You you seem you seem okay. I'll trust Hibonite on this one. Uh, Thank you. Yes yes. Uh, but keep a keep an eye out for for him. He he seems like he's quite good with his axe. Oh, uh, I don't worry about that. He's <laughs> quite easy to evade. I I see. Yes. Uh. I... Uh. But anyway. Uh. I'm Solara. Uh, who are you? I'm I'm Margraine Silverbeard. It's very nice to meet you. Good to meet I'm you. I'm Magnar. Is... Pleased to meet you, lady. Um, yes. I I wasn't expecting to meet anyone here tonight. Uh, what, what brings you through that. here? Um, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's a complicated question. <laughs> um, <laughs> we can leave it at complicated on both sides. That's fine. Okay. Okay. That 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 sounds good. Sightseeing. We'll go with that one. <laughs> Sightseeing. I mean, <laughs> the mountains are beautiful. They, they, they very much are. Um, the, the pass looks like it's going to be interesting, though, if we do manage to get passage. But I yes. haven't tried. Uh, neither have I. I'm, I'm not from around here. Um, and, and at, um, at that moment, a uh, you see a uh, old but very spry little gnome comes up. Um, he's wearing the apron of a, uh, you know, a barkeep. He says, hello there, travelers. My name is Gully Fastbender. Welcome, welcome. Here, let me pull over another table. We want to put two tables together. We can get some chairs over there. All of you can sit down. Um, are you looking for food and drink? Food and drink for you three. Oh, that, that would be, that would be fantastic. I haven't had a good meal in days. There are four of us. I've got my ale. Thank you. Yes, she's been served. I, I, I am very focused. I'm very good at my job. Thank you very much, big man, though. I appreciate it. Do you, do you have my any rooms mistake. spare as well? Yes, we have so many rooms. They're, they're, we, we've got rooms that are just... We can put you all in one room if you want. That'll just cost you about five gold. Uh, if you guys all want your own individual rooms, ten gold apiece. If you want one of the suites, we've only got two of those, so those are two or 25 gold a person. Wow, expensive rooms. Well, uh, when when you're up here and um, uh, there's nothing else, um, you know, I got to stay in business somehow. Oh yes, and, and I, I'm I'm sure you have very uh, uh, well a lot of merchants that come through, so they have coins to spend. Merchants, and then you know the soldiers they come in and they go up to the pass, they guard the gate, they do whatever they do up in the pass, and then they got to rotate out. You know, they can't stay up there for more than a week, or else they'd, they'd freeze to death and it wouldn't do so good. Not great for the old noggin. Not great for the old noggin at all. Um. So I'm assuming if you put us all in one room, that that would be three beds. I've already got a room. Yes. I, I think. Yes. Yeah. If I if I said you, it'd be four, because there's three of us, then there's you. What? I, that, if you put us three, the guys, in one mm-hmm. room, there'd be three yes. beds. Yes. Separate beds. 
Yes. We're not top and tailing at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. There'll be three bad... Well, really, it's, it, we're talking more cots, you know, and if you want to get into the whole, like, feather pillows and, and other things of that nature, then you need to get your own individual rooms, which, you know, you guys look like travelers. I see that some nice armor you're wearing right there, sir, and, and um, well, that that is a wolfskin cloak, so you might you two might want to share that room I, i'm not sure <laughs> and how much was the single room 10 gold a piece right 10 gold a piece uh, i think one room yes guys i think one room amongst all of us we, we camp together so. yes you mean we camp together sleep together that's what they always say <laughs> all right <laughs> Gen- generally in a camp you have to sleep together it's hard to get a separate room in a camp those are the facts <laughs> right so <laughs> All right, I'll be back with your food. Thank you. Um, did you guys have anything you wanted to discuss in particular? I wanted to to maybe invite Blevin over to our table. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Invite I'm gonna Blevin walk to up to Blevin and and ask him if he'd like to join us at the table. All right. He comes over. He's like, "Oh well, great! Uh, another new friend. You guys are, are wonderful at making those, huh?" Yes. Yes. We 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 tend to encounter a lot of a, a lot of interesting people. Um, you know, Great. And, um, and you know Saint Eligius, you know, always open for for people to to change and make better people. So it's best to make friends. Yes. Yes, that, uh, I, I am aware that's a picadillo of, of your order for sure. Yes. Um, and have you arranged uh, anywhere to stay or anything? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be staying here. Nice. Um, Do you go for a suite, a room, or are you sharing? Uh, <laughs> just a, just a room. Um, you know, I need. I, I, I do enjoy company, of course, but sometimes I just need a little, a little blevin time, you know. <laughs> I hear the blue roots is good for company. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you're if you're up for that sort of thing. Are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, I've enjoyed our time together, Hip and Night, and, and uh, we've saved each other's lives. But we're gonna we're getting a little personal here. Okay. Slipping into the gully there. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> So, uh, uh, were you saying something? I, I haven't met you, new friend. Um, hello. Uh, I'm Zalara. How do you Hi, guys know each other? Well, we met at Castle Delacro, and uh. Uh, so we just have been traveling together. We both have our own um, individual business at um, going through the pass. So, yeah, okay. that's right, right, Margarine? Yes. Yes. Hmm. It, what, I'm sorry. What was that business again? Uh, well, Sightseeing. Thank you, Hibonite. <laughs> uh, no, no, not 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 sightseeing. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna do it now. Yeah, that's what's yep. gonna happen. Uh, no, no. I I had I said I had business, and I hope it would be you know our travel would be resolved by with the time we got here. It looks like it's not, uh, Blevin, because uh, why does Brommel want your book? Hmm. And he kind of stops for a second. <laughs> Obviously, this is not what he expected. Yes. <laughs> he does, huh? Yes. So, and he just kind of laughs, takes a swig of his beer. So you were all my book. Okay. That's why you were traveling with me. Yeah. I thought it was odd. I, I thought it was weird. I, you were obviously lying about having passage to the pass. Yes. We do um, have business. You do have business, yeah. Um, which is taking my book. Well, not just sightseeing. Finding Fodhava. I don't care about your book, unless it leads me to her. Hmm. He said. And Vodhava, I'm once again the the woman you're in love with. My wife. Hmm. So, I, I I'm I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Blevin, in such a crowded place. But you know. Oh yeah, you know I'm sure that was not part of your plan at all. N- no, it's um, not convenient for you. Yes, because you Safer. see, you see, we we send we set off. Uh, we're looking for his wife. This is supposed to help us find her, and honestly, I think the impression that that Bromwell gave us was that, you know, we were supposed to take it from you by force. And as I said, I like you. Um, I don't want to do that. Now, that's not that's not a threat. I legitimately, I think you're a good man. Why does he want your book? Well, you remember what I showed you about Bromwell being a member of the Red Hand? Yes, and In that... Fact, not just being a member, <sighs> actually funding the Red Hand? Yes, and that concerns me greatly after what we saw in the town. Well, it concerns me as well, and I've been pretty vocal about that. So I'm sure that whatever he gave you, whatever impression he gave you, was purely 
a, a personal vengeance. I see. But and what what's valuable in your in your in your book to him? You said I don't know if there's anything. You said that he wanted you to take it by violence. I think the violence was his end. Um. Well, it, it doesn't seem that way. It seems he wants the book. We're supposed to deliver the book to someone here. Really? Who is that? I, I'm I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna say that quite yet because I would like to avoid violence on all sides. Uh, yes. So, right. what what in right. your book does he want? He obviously wants something, Levin. And you you've pr- you've proven to me over our our many days together that you are a good man. Why why would you have something of value in your book to to him if he's so despicable? Persuasion. Like I, said, I don't know of any reason other than he was looking for an excuse some kind of meaningless bauble for you to follow i see what in that case me? can i have it could i borrow the book <laughs> i need to get the information about my wife if he's true on that uh, alex i rolled 22 on insight yeah he's lying his ass off but, 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 but that's not really true is it you don't really seem to believe your words is that right the, the mouth, not? the mouth moves, but the eyes are lying. Well, gentlemen and lady, uh, I want. This has been fun. I and he stands st- up. You know of oh. the red hand. Yes. Can I? Do you can know I grab where his book? Alal is? <laughs> no, I burned a lot of them alive, but we'll get to that later. Um, Hold on, r- real quick, real quick. Um, so we got some business to do. Ben, you're going to try and grab his book. Yep. All right. Are you just going to forcefully grab it, or? Well, I don't know how else. I mean, it's it's on his. It's on a chain, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The only thing I could think is if you're going to try and sn- well, no, you know, you're right. It's not really in Margarine's character to, to sneakily grab it. So, all right. Yeah. What I need you to do is we're basically going to do it like a grapple. So, all right. strikes. Is it an attack or just strength? I think it's just no, strength. no. It's um, acrobatics. No, it's a- or it's athletics. Is, is Ath- either? Well, no, I think it's athletics for the attacker and either for the other person. Is that right? Uh, yeah, athletics or yeah, or that's right. Yeah. Yes. So okay. So you have so yeah. If you're not trained in it, then it is just strength. But oh no, is, I got it. Oh, oh man, point. fifteen with a plus six. <laughs> oh my god, Ben. Yeah. Oh, um. All right. You grab the book and with your strength rip it off the chain, and you have it in your hand. Um. You guys all at the table see this. How is everybody reacting to that? Uh, I will be standing up like flame. Um. Choose flame hands. Flame on. <laughs> flame on! <laughs> so, so and, towards uh, Levin. So it's like Zalara, you're, Zalara, you're at this table. These people came up. They seem friendly. Um, they talk to this guy. He comes up. They've been lying to him. And um, they, they mentioned the red hand. Uh, you were asking about Ilal, but then this big guy just grabs a book off of his chain. How do you react to this? I am going to stay seated because I don't really want to get in the middle of a fight. <laughs> okay. That, that seems perfect. Smart. I love that. Smart. smart. <laughs> smart. Um, I'm going to stand up in the defensive posture. All three and foot of me. And Blevin will say Margraine, get, or Magnar, give me back my book. Help me get Von Hava back. Just give me back my book. Blevin, Magnar. please help us. Help you? Yes. I, I would have helped you had you been honest to me once this whole journey. Quite, you have not. Quite honestly, I didn't know what I was walking into, as I said. I, I was very honest with you the other night. I want to say that. Give me back my book. Roll for initiative. Oh, okay. my goodness. <laughs> I have no and idea we'll, what we'll to do. We'll call this so. episode right there. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thanks for listening to episode 15 of Beholder's Eye, Barbarian Diplomacy. Please join us in welcoming Zalara, the wood elf monk, as the newest member of the crew. She is played by our buddy Kim, and we're all pumped to have her on board and excited for what she brings to the table. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're just so excited that she's one of us. Be sure to check us out on Twitter at I underscore Beholders and our website, BeholdersEyeCast.com. There you can see character portraits and listen to Margraine's journal. Please subscribe and review us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, or whatever podcast app you use. It really helps us out, and we appreciate all the support we can get. Music by Incompetech, Angevine, Constancy Part 2, Decline, Long Note 1, Magic Forest, Some Amount of Evil, Our Story Begins, and Curse of the Scarab by Kevin McLeod, Incompetech.com. 
Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License, creativecommons.org. All sound effects by zapsblatt.com and freesound.org. Spooky Wind How by Kangaroo Vindaloo, licensed under Attribution 3.0 License. For a full list of sound effects, please check the show notes. Episode editing by Sam Canary. Music and effects editing by Benjamin Floyd. Thanks and as you wish. We'll see you next week.